Okay, in this video, I'm going to break down how an old ankle injury led to dysfunction and muscle imbalances throughout my body, traveling all the way up to my shoulders and neck. Going back to when the injury first happened, I was 16 years old, playing basketball, jumped up in the air to get a rebound or some shit, came down, landed on somebody else's foot, spraining my ankle in what's called an inversion sprain where you roll to the outside and the x-rays came back to say you know there's no break uh, it's just a sprain you may have torn some ligaments i believe was the diagnosis uh, but the takeaway was that there isn't any necessarily significant structural damage it's just an ankle sprain you should be okay and then the basketball season was starting like a month later and i really wanted to play and i was 16 and i was stupid and i didn't realize you know i didn't think that it could lead to other issues and i was like ah my ankle i'll just strap a brace on it and use my left leg more <laughs> and i should be fine it didn't heal correctly and this is my own fault i didn't really do the recovery process properly. I should have waited longer. I should have been more thorough with the physio exercises and the rehabilitation process. And I'm going to get later into how this x-ray diagnosis was actually incorrect. And there's a number of fractures and the damage was much more significant. I ended up losing a significant amount of range of motion in my ankle, wherein I didn't recover the proper amount of dorsiflexion. And that's just a fancy word for bending your knee over your foot. You can see here in the test that I'm doing that the right is significantly less than the left. Um, and apparently, roughly speaking, <clears throat> you should be able to keep your foot five inches from a wall and bend your knee forward and have your knee touch the wall. But you can see here with the right foot that I'm nowhere near that. And so there's a jamming, blocking kind of happening in the ankle where the talus muscle, this little bone that sits underneath tibia and fibula, which are the two bones in your shin, is supposed to glide backwards as your shin bone moves forward, as your knee bends forward. And so the body is going to turn your foot out. And then as a result, you can see that the knee can still bend forward. You're still achieving that motion. But the issue is now you're getting a collapsed arch and kind of like an internally rotating ankle joint where you can see it's kind of collapsing through the arch and folding inwards. And then the knee is going to fall in and then traveling further up the spine, you're going to have that hip drift forward. It's going to rotate forward as that knee falls in. And it's also going to shift up laterally. Okay. And a big part of the problem here is that the glute on the right side is getting shut off because the glute is going to be responsible for keeping that knee tracking the toe for avoiding it from falling in. One of the functions of your glute is to abduct the leg, which just means move your leg outwards. All right. And so when you're in like a planted position or when you're taking a step forward, that glute muscle is going to be respond among many other hip muscles, a deep uh, superficial hip muscles, but let's just call it the glute to make it simple is going to be responsible for um, contracting or activating to keep that knee tracking over the ankle. Another function of the glute muscle is going to be to externally rotate the femur or your leg. The femur is your upper quad bone. And in this case, you're getting the opposite of external rotation. If you keep your femur fixed and you rotate the hip forward, you're getting internal rotation. And so that's kind of deactivating the glute muscle further is the way to think about it. But for these years from, you know, 16 to like my early to mid 20s, I didn't know that there had been anything more than an ankle sprain. And I knew that my ankle was messed up. As you can see here, the outside of the ankle bone is called the lateral malleolus. And the right one is significantly more enlarged than the left. Apparently that's due to scar tissue. It's hard. It's like calcified. It's like bone. I just thought, oh, it's an ankle. It's not going to cause any other problems. I had no idea that the, the effect that it was having on my movement. And so I continued to play sports, continued to play basketball. And I started working out uh, really hard, and, you know, uh, when I was about 18. And as I got into my early to mid twenties, a lot of issues started to flare up. Like my lower back would always seize up. Um, and like asymmetrically, like I'd pull my right hip flexor, my right psoas would always like get pulled and I wouldn't be able to like train for a couple weeks. And I couldn't really do like leg workout workouts properly. I just had really limited mobility, but I was really unaware. And, I, and it's also important to note that I'm not like a super flexible person to begin with. And that I'm somebody that's already like pretty tight. As you kind of combine that with this ankle injury, eventually things started to really tighten up. And I kind of could tell in my walk that the one foot was like really flaring out to the side. I kind of started to clue in. And so I started investigating and looking into it and going, how can I fix this? How can I improve the ankle? And so I went and got a CT scan or a CAT scan. And that's, you can see the results here when it re was revealed that, you know, there's 
remnants of, of fractures. There's some mild osteoarthritis. There's presence of bone spurs. I don't know exactly what all these things mean, but there's clearly structural damage. This is the first time that I was aware or it was being brought to light that it was more than just an ankle sprain. And I started seeing different kind of specialists, physiotherapists, podiatrists. 2015 is when I when it like really started to cause symptoms or problems up in my shoulders and neck and I started to get the numbness into the left side of my face. I'm not really going to go through exactly how it's caused imbalances in my upper body. I think that's better um, explained in the video that I made previously. So you can just go and watch that afterwards. And so I really started to dive in, see a lot of different professionals, uh, countless physiotherapists, chiropractors, uh, athletic therapists, osteopath, which is somebody who looks at the body in a more holistic way, looked into sur uh, surgery, um, saw some foot specialists, whatever, tried a bunch of different orthotics and different things. A lot of them just made it worse and caused the ankle to flare up again. Um, Kelly Sturette, you know, with the ankle mobility, with the bands, any type of different like ankle mobility issue. And at this time I'm learning a lot about my anatomy because I'm seeing all these different people and I'm researching it a lot myself and I'm like trying to understand what the fuck is going on. But, you know, uh, when the actual like symptom of the face going numb hit, I could no longer train upper body. I was already pretty limited with what I was doing with legs. I kind of just completely stepped away. I was like, I guess I can't really train. I guess I can't really work out because I'm so snapped up. I would try like hill running. I tried, you know, know, spin bike intervals. I would try all kinds of different exercises and everything would cause dysfunction because everything's moving in a dysfunctional way. So you can imagine if you don't have the ability to move through that ankle and you go to do something like a fixed position squat, there's going to be huge issues. Nothing's going to move in a symmetrical or roughly symmetrical functional way. You're going to exacerbate the issue. And that's what was happening. So anytime I would do like a deadlift or a squat or a leg press, I would like get like pull my groin or seize up my lower back because everything is crooked and I don't have the ability to move through a proper range of motion. Stumbling into body weight lunges about a year and a half, close to two years ago, I realized I could do that without causing the imbalance to be worse. And a big part of the reason is that when you're in a split stance position, if you have some kind of lack of range of motion or imbalance in your hips, it's not going to be as significantly illuminated. You can kind of work around it as opposed to like a squat or a deadlift or a movement that requires more mobility. And also you don't need a significant amount of dorsiflexion in your ankle to do a lunge. You can just, you know, a small degree where that knee bends forward, but you can primarily get that motion through your hip and your knee. And so for these reasons, I'm able to execute this movement um, with, you know, still having pretty restricted mobility in my ankle and not necessarily exacerbate the muscle imbalances significantly. I do a good amount of mobility and stretching ahead of time, and then I'll stretch out afterwards and things don't get worse. They don't get better, but they don't get worse. A couple takeaway messages from this are that one, if you do have structural damage and dysfunction in a joint, it's probably going to travel up or down the chain depending where your injury is and cause issues elsewhere and being aware of this and trying to address it early right when the injury happens is absolutely paramount and lastly that sometimes if you just start with what you can do so if you're watching this and you have similar dysfunction or you have an issue in your body and you're relating or like i've seen a lot of the comments where people are kind of saying oh, i have something similar or this happened to me and like i can relate and you never fucking know if you just start doing what you can doing it took me years to find body weight lunges and then just show, I never missed a fucking workout. And I always showed up to the leg day and did all the mobility and did all the stretching and did my best, put in my best effort, regardless of what I have to do more than I did last time to push myself on days when I don't want to train, when my body is tired, when the reps hurt, when I feel like puking legs, like it sucks, always did it. And then going from kind of broken, can't do any leg workout to jumping lunges with 70 or 75 pound dumbbells. Thanks for tuning in. Subscribe if you like it and more videos to come. Have a great day. Peace.